Hi, I'm Jesse McAnally. I'm the host of Musicals with Cheese, but I'm not just that. I'm also a filmmaker, and today I am launching a Kickstarter to help fund my first feature film entitled The Daughters of the Domino. The plot follows Detective Nina Rose, acclaimed for arresting her own serial killer father, the Domino, but destroying her relationship with her sister, Laura. Years later, the Domino is dead, but Laura's daughter, Jules, goes missing, so the sisters must reunite and work together to find Jules before it's too late. Sounds like a pretty good film, right? Something you'd like to see? Well, that's why you should check out our Kickstarter, or go to DaughtersOfTheDomino.com for more information. I repeat, DaughtersOfTheDomino.com. So what are you waiting for? We gotta get this movie made, and we can't do it without you. Go check us out! Hello, I'm Jesse McAnally. And I'm Andrew DeWolf. And I'm Liz Eston. And welcome to Boozicals with Cheese, a podcast where I try to get spooky Andrew and spooky Liz to like ooky spooky musical theater. Ha 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 ha. How are you doing today, Andrew? Oh boy, I'm spooked. I'm absolutely spooked beyond belief. <laughs> I feel I feel like I, there's no sincerity coming out of that statement whatsoever. I'm scared, um, and I am frightened, and I'm spooked. Yeah, me too, me too. How have you been, though, aside from all that? Well, you know, it's been a little weird, but that's what happens when you get lost in uh, the woods for uh, ten episodes. <laughs> um, fair enough. Um, I feel like, have you noticed that there's something following us? And the highwayman warned us about the beast. It was is the woodsman actually. The highwayman just sang a little song. We got warned about the beast basically by everyone we bumped into in this yeah. scenario. Or am I Greg and you're Wart, or am I Wart and you're Greg? I don't think I want to be either of them. Can I be the bird? Okay, Liz, you're Wart. No, I want to be Greg. Nope. This nobody week, wants to be Wart. <laughs> nobody likes Wart. This week, in case you haven't picked up what we're throwing down, by popular demand, we are covering Over the Garden Wall. Cue the music, Bree. And how the gentle wind beckons through the leaves as autumn colors fall. Dancing in a swirl of golden memories, the loveliest lies of all. Over the Garden Wall is a TV show made for Cartoon Network created by Patrick McHale um, with music and lyrics by American Nouveau, Nouveau folk band called The Blasting Company. Um, it made its premiere on Cartoon Network on November 3rd, 2014, and ran for over five consecutive nights. The series centers on two half-brothers who travel across a mysterious forest to find their way home, encountering a variety of strange and fantastical things on their journey. Andrew, have you heard about the show before we covered it today? I think the only thing I've seen of it is that there's a bunch of frogs in it. And there really? is a bunch of frogs there in it. There is. Yeah. I, it's a debate of what there is more of, frogs or turtles. Well, I mean, I think literally speaking, there's more turtles because there's that one episode with a basket of turtles. But Well, there's turtles in basically every episode. I didn't even notice that. Mm -hmm. um, and also, like, this, sh there's nothing like this show. It's like, I wouldn't even call it a kid's show, weirdly enough feels like closer to Courage the Cowardly Dog than any other show, and I wouldn't even I wouldn't show that one to my kid. We shouldn't have been watching that as children. I had nightmares from Courage. I didn't watch that. Yeah, that shit was fucked up. The slap episode. Yeah. The the weird CGI mix, unpleasant. It's not good to look at. It's it's just ugly and uh, scary. And on our 4x3 CRT TVs where the quality is even worse, yeah, it felt like bad. he was coming out. He was going to get us. <laughs> he was, was coming out of the TV. But there's things of the same ilk in this show as well. There's like very spooky things, very unpleasant. Like the beast alone is terrifying, which is the antagonist of the story. The beast is pretty scary looking. They don't show the actual design. Except for like a frame. For more than like, um, like yeah, I think I went through it was like three frames because I wanted to see what he looked like. <laughs> and he looks like Freddy Krueger except made of wood. And that's um, scarier than if we saw him the whole <laughs> whole time um and then his the rest of the show he's like a dark silhouette with antlers it reminds me of that one movie that's on like netflix or something but i can't even remember what it was called like the ritual or something like that i never heard of but it the antagonist is like a, a human torso with antlers um, that's cool yeah but the design was similar mm -hmm. um what would you describe the plot of this show is because 
it's not i i feels more like a narrative movie with like vignetted segments because the entire thing is about two hours um, we got to get out of the woods into the woods and out of the woods and home before dark i mean i think that is generally just the plot they have to get out of the woods i mean there is that but you also have like all these characters that build upon it especially like beatrice who i think is important to bring up yeah there's other stuff going on but the one through line narratively is just they're trying to get out of the woods Mm -hmm. i mean (laughs) other stuff happens and our main characters wirt and greg um what do you think of them greg is feels like he's from a different cartoon network show like it feels like he's the comedy character he's the one yes. like well this is a cartoon network show there has to be a kid to make the kids laugh and then wirt is just annoying um oh, you think he's just annoying yeah i feel like he gets better though he, he has like an actual character arc mm-hmm. i I, I don't know. I didn't I didn't like him much at the beginning. That's fair. He is kind of pretentious in a way. I think you, you the whole show is is a it's a vibe based show. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And uh, I think that's where the music comes in. Because even though there isn't like songs in every episode, there's always like ambient music that's like. It's just, it's a vibe. I completely agree. This is good agree. criticism, I think. This is this is what they put in the New York Times, probably. I mean, yeah, this is what Ben Prantley would write. Um, <laughs> and he'd write a narrative about his entire vibe. About bro, it. <laughs> it's like a vibe-based thing, bro. You're not you wrong. Gotta... There's like, if you... <laughs> If you type in Over the Garden Wall onto YouTube, there's like 50 compilations of just music played on piano with like the imagery going on. Um, this is just something you can put on a Halloween party and just the visuals alone will give you like the proper feeling. Um, so do you feel like, th- I mean, this is obviously an original idea um, and we're going to get metaphysical here. Did you know what it's based on? And did you figure it out halfway in? Based on? It's based on... Um... A popular story or the truth if you're some parts of America. Uh, I guess I didn't. I don't. It's based on Dante's Inferno, where you have the character who's a poet oh. named Dante, um, who's trying to get Isn't through that canonized these... in, in Catholicism. Yes, where he's trying to get through all these levels of the Inferno to get to his love Beatrice. Um, and if you break down each of the nine episodes, and they are nine, um circles of the inferno they match up pretty well with what happens in the episode like you have limbo lust gluttony greed wrath here's heresy violence fraud and treachery Hmm. and in each episode there's something that lines up with that and if you look at what dante looked like um and compare it to the way that wirt is dressed they are very very similar images i guess i can sort of see that honestly usually i am looking for that type of stuff and i didn't pick up on that um i like dante's inferno but i didn't mm. i did not pick up on that at all uh, and that's kind of the reason why this show works for me like it's not heavy-handed in anything it does and there and not to say that it's grimdark but it takes itself seriously there is comedic moments specifically with fred the horse who i think is probably my, one of my favorite characters in this i think it is a perfect entry in the genre of children's horror okay which is a genre that i think is too uh, too often neglected. What else would you put into children's horror? Like, I know it's been a very bleak genre for the last, like, ten years. You have, like, goosebumps and stuff like that, you know? Ooh, wait till later this this month, kids. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's gonna be good, actually. <laughs> um, wait, but, I, I yeah, I mean, Goosebumps right Goosebumps is, is a good example. Uh, you know, there's other TV shows, like, um... This is what Dante what looks like. The the one where they they are you put afraid the, of the dark? Yeah, that one. Are you afraid of the dark? Um, honest, honestly, it's hard to name entries because there's so few of them. <laughs> like, would you? I'd count like Gremlins and Krampus in there too. Yeah, Gremlins for sure. Krampus might be too edgy, but I really, think I Krampus is there. too edgy. What? I think I, I would put it there, but there's a lot of people that I it's think wouldn't PG show that to kids. It's a PG thirteen movie that little babies could watch. They wouldn't show it to kids though. They, no, no, no. No, I saw it in theaters. It was like people over 13, like no children were there. But yeah, I mean, I think this is a really good entry, though, Mm -hmm. Um, because it's the thing that with that some children's horror doesn't doesn't have. And I feel like Goosebumps sometimes does this is it's just not actually scary at all. Like, it's not even like a little scary. Right. Um, And it's like, well, it's not actually horror if it's not scary even a little bit like it has to be kind of scary they're afraid <laughs> to put actual stakes 
they always undercut the threat. Here, while there is comedy, the threat is never undercut. Yeah, I mean, one of the main characters almost fucking dies. <laughs> as far as we know, they, they might have died. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> um, I do have a question about narrative linearity here. So we have basically a complete narrative. We start the show and they're just wandering around the woods. Like, when you started, what time period did you think this took place in? Honestly, I thought they were just going for, like, an ambiguous, like, mm -hmm. you know, 18 to 19 xx <laughs> you yes know? and then episode um, nine happens yeah episode nine happens and it's like oh okay so it's like modern well they're modern but so it's actually at first you don't know because right. it's like is this just they live in this weird world and they actually are just trying to like get to their house or something or are they from a different world and are like trapped somewhere and it turns out it's that and i think that's like one of those brilliant reveals and in the commentaries that was originally the first episode episode nine that was oh. how they planned to start but then they thought i think well, that would have been a much crappier opening i i mean it would have read more like a chowder or kind of show or more like a adventure time kind of show because of it would have been too obvious that like there'd, there'd be too much of a juxtaposition immediately where it's like oh well they're trying to go back to the real world you know and you just feel the Wizard of Oz side of it where you, as soon as you see them go down, you think, oh, it's a dream. Yeah. Whereas with this, you're, you're like, oh, shit, just weird shit happens. Like, yeah. I don't even know. <laughs> and I think I like imagine just a small change could have made this much worse. Well, I mean, I think that's the case with a lot of stuff. You know, sometimes mm -hmm. sometimes something is put together so well that any any change would just drastically alter its quality now they go to a lot of places in the show um because this is a vignette style show what do you think they're the best place they went to is like what is your favorite episode my favorite i think i mean my favorite is is uh, the final episode okay but if we Just have to talk the resolution about the, the vignette stuff yeah probably the tavern or the pumpkin patch place Ooh, i i love the pumpkin patch place because just the anti-climax of it a lot of these are kind of based on anti-climaxes where they set up what should be a threat and then they reveal there's more to the story, which I really like. That's the narrative device I like. Well, I a think lot. it's fun, and it, but they never undercut it too much because even if the threat isn't the threat, the overarching threat is always present and is actually a threat. Yes. Like, let's take um, Mr. Under Windicott, Indicott, um, the old man played by John Cleese where he thinks he has... A ghost. Yes, which I think he's the ghost. You know, Quincy actually. Endicott. Yes, Quincy correct. Endicott, Unky. as played by um, Unky Endicott. I I don't understand <laughs> why people don't like Greg because that's great. I, I love Greg. <laughs> what is, um, I do have a story about Greg a little bit later. Um, but the fact is, the ghost he sees is just his neighbor who he immediately falls in love with, which is weird. Yeah, and then he's never seen again. But the neighbor is. It's weird because John Cleese is seen again, and he plays Adelaide, which is mm. a strange his range. Yeah, um, which is a strange choice by the creators. But another time that's done is Auntie Whispers. Um, if you remember her as played by Tim Curry, who, oh my God, a poor man. I thought that there was going to be something with the turtles in that where she was eating the turtles because she looked kind of like the dog from the first episode. Well, that's the thing. Well, they both are. There's theories that the turtles are a result of the trees. Um, they come from the trees that the beast created and grew. So that the, whatever they get involved gets caught up in the beast, which is what happened to the daughter, allegedly, is the yeah. beast got in her. Yeah, and maybe from the turtles. Yeah, and Auntie Whispers, you think is the threat, but it's really the daughter who's the threat, and she's just trying to keep her at bay. Like, things like that, that are, like, basic storytelling for us, but for kids would probably be really, like, against the grain. Am I the only one that thought Auntie Whispers was still the bad guy even after that, though? Yeah, I did a little. Like, what do it, you mean? It was, so, it was so easy to ring the bell and just get rid of the spirit. Like, Wirt did it the first try. How come Auntie Whispers didn't do that? I feel like I, she just wanted a slave. I mean, there's that, too. Yeah. <laughs> there's something that, even when she was nice, I got a bad vibe from her. I, I don't know. It's like, mm -hmm. so you could have just expelled the demon by telling the demon to leave? I don't know. Like, I mean, we also mm, got to remember that Adelaide is Auntie Whisper's sister. <laughs> they both grew yeah. up in the same household, and Adelaide, They're like... They're both evil-ish, probably. Yeah. yeah. One of them wanted child labor. Yeah. They both kind of want child labor. Which is still evil. Yeah, they did both want child labor. <laughs> Wait, <laughs> hang yeah. on a second. <laughs> Except one of them is Greg. 
Oh, poor Greg. Poor Greg. Um, so your theory is Greg is dead. My theory is that they're in purgatory. Um, Like they are half dead and you can interpret the ending whether uh, it's Wirt's dream of the better case scenario. No, I mean, I think that they're, I think that they did get out. I, I was honestly, I was thinking that your theory was something with maybe we don't see Greg after the fact, but I'm pretty sure but we no, we do. do. No, no, we do. Cause so. we, yeah. Um, out of all of Greg's names for his frog, which was your favorite? Both of you. Uh, like Dr. Cucumber or something? Dr. Cucumber? I think it was that. I love George Washington, where he just keeps calling him the president. I think, I actually think Kitty was the best one. I think that's kind of a funny name for a frog. <laughs> yeah, a kitty name, a frog named Kitty. Yeah, I think that's kind of funny. I don't like I'm gonna go with it... I'm going to go with Mr. President, only because it's just <laughs> vague and stupid. I love it so much, especially because that was the episode where he gets a record deal. I actually think the, the, the name that they end up with is the worst one, but... Um, oh, Jason Funderburker. Funderburker. Yeah. 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 Um, I like that Greg is always Greg, even in dark situations. Like, there's that time where he's like about to die covered in trees and he's coughing up leaves and she's like oh no he, he's got leaves on the inside of him he's like no i was just eating leaves <laughs> like that that's the right kind of joke that doesn't undercut the moment and feels right for the character okay so the beast turns children into trees yeah, yeah. well uh, yes and that's what the um lumberjack is cutting down to fill the yeah, lantern the, the woodsman is the best character as well uh, uh, yeah uh, elaborate yeah. also yeah. keep going i like christopher when lloyd. christopher lloyd is in stuff and i also <laughs> like weird old men that are getting manipulated by bad stuff <laughs> i think that that's a cool narrative thing I guess. um i honestly don't did not like that his daughter was still alive i didn't like that, that was weird i don't like that he, like she that. just came back at the end i feel like he should have just dealt with that sacrifice no, because I thought the whole point, I think his whole character arc is that he is driven by a denial to properly process grief. Mm -hmm. And he is keeping this monster alive in his quest to do so. And then the ending is him deciding to actually correctly process his grief and helping other people by also doing that. But it's very heavily undercut because... The daughter just kind of shows up and is like, hey, yeah, what's up? I absolutely <laughs> hate that the daughter shows up again. That is like, if I have anything that's negative about that, that's a big one. Um, although it, this also has like one of my favorite narrative things that has ever happened in like a medium ever. And that's when the beast offers Wirt the opportunity to become the new woodsman. He's like, you hold the lantern and keep him alive. And he's like, no, that's stupid. <laughs> like in any other thing, they'd be like, I will do it. Yes, yes. And now he's like, no, that, that, that's stupid that makes no sense i'm not just gonna self-sacrifice for something that makes no goddamn sense yeah but i mean i think that that's a it's a great way to juxtapose what word has learned versus uh who the woodsman has become yeah. you know and the woodsman is also one of the few like things that are there from episode one to the end same with beatrice um did you notice you know that first house that wirt and greg kind of destroy did yeah. you notice that that was beatrice's house it has like bluebird designs all over the walls and in the final scene that's where beatrice and her family are living i did notice that i don't understand the significance but i did notice it i just think that's <laughs> cool um, cause he says, I just found this house abandoned and started making additions to it. Um, do you think it's weird that the woodsman, do you, do you think he's lying? Like he doesn't, Which that part? he didn't know that the trees were like lost souls or something like, I think he was lying to himself, you know, like he did know. But like he kept he going inkling, like, well, I don't have any proof. I don't have any proof. <laughs> he d had probably had an inkling that is used for something nefarious, but would rather not know because his daughter was worth it. Yeah. Um. What do you think of Beatrice and her storyline? Uh, I think it's okay. What is it? I don't understand. How did she turn into a bird? I don't she, understand what happened. Th she threw a rock at a bluebird, and that bluebird cursed her and her family to be bluebirds forever. So cartoon logic. Yeah. Why would Fantasy you throw a logic. rock at a bluebird? That's so mean. I mean, if you got nothing better than just to, you know, wander the woods forever. I wish that we got to see them chopping off their wings with scissors to make yeah, them human again. That was that's such a weird I fantasy thing. Her. That's like an into the woods dark thing. I just wanted to see that. Yeah. Liz, what do you think is your favorite like near like little vignette? Uh 
I'm not, I liked, I really like the tavern. Mm-hmm. Um, I have to say the pumpkin town because striking it had, visuals. It, visually, it's really interesting. And also, just like pumpkins, like, it's just like pumpkins a lot around Halloween. Uh, but the tavern was also really cool. Uh, I liked the school a lot too because it was very like scary ish, <laughs> but it wasn't actually in the end, it was just okay. a massive misunderstanding involving a gorilla costume. I like that one because it does a bunch of reversals of people that should be evil not being evil. Yeah. Um, like School for Animals 1. That's just a funny idea where you have like little bulldog and little later hose and learning about how to read. And, and they the can't talk. performing the benefit concert for. Um, it's just school. a schoolhouse in the middle of nowhere. Who is going to the concert and giving them money? The dog parents. I don't know. No, it's people. <laughs> Who is he paying to open a school in the middle of the woods? Well, where else are the is animals going to go? Is there property taxes? Is there a government? I don't know. Is there a government in the world where there's pumpkin people that take over the skeletons? Yes. Well, I mean, yes, there is. The, there the is a judicial system. Is, they had a punishment. The, yeah. Just a few hours of manual labor. And then turning into skeletons. My God. That, we all, they all end up there eventually, allegedly. That is like one of the most fucked ideas that's so beautiful is you die, then you become like this happy pumpkin town. Yeah. I live there. What, what level of hell is that supposed to be? The first level? Is that the first? That's be the first level of hell, right? Um, I think it's, you know, because the first one I think is. I, I you gotta, you're going to have to line this up for me, Jess. I'm okay. not getting the Dante's Inferno vibes. I did a lot of Googling on this thing and Dante's Inferno has not appeared in any of my results. What is the first level right, of let's hell? Let's break down the episodes. Uh, Liz, do you have an episode list for me? Can you get that? I, yep, I have I the Dante's Inferno here. Okay. Okay. Should I just read you off the titles? Just the first episode. First one is the one in the woods, right? Like Yes. Into the Unknown. They go to the woods. Into the house. Unknown. Yeah. <laughs> and and there's this awesome song I forgot about. <laughs> Um, and that one is Limbo, where you're just kind of getting your footing and figuring things out. Yes, Limbo okay. is actually not a circle of hell. No. Um, that is a misunderstanding. Limbo is a different thing. I'm just telling... They call it the first circle of hell. They are wrong, but okay. That's where <laughs> virtuous non-Christians find themselves. Yes. So that's where I'll so that is up. where cool. I will be, because I am virtuous <laughs> and non-Christian. <laughs> I'll just... Well, I'm I'm a reformed Catholic, so I'll just be hanging out in hell. So it's fine. Um, the yeah, second I mean, all Catholics go to hell, so it's okay. Yeah, that's true. The second one is lust. Second one is Pumpkin Town. Yes. Yeah, so souls are blown apart in a violent storm without hope or of rest. Well, they are like they are skeletons. Draw that a never line get... here for me. <laughs> <laughs> no rest. They have no eternal di- rest because they become pumpkins. Okay. All right. I'll buy okay. it this one time. Right. We're gonna have to Next keep going. Next up is then. school. Gluttony. All right. I can actually get the school one because this one is the one with the songs about potatoes and molasses. Yes. And that sounds kind of delicious. <laughs> Okay, what's the next one? Yeah, well, next, next up, up is it's the one with the tavern where Beatrice can't go in and they want directions. Oh, that one's greed. Um, no, isn't so the next did... one greed? Because that's the one with the rich guy. Maybe I have. Oh, I might have this beyond and like, okay, so let's move all of them up real quick. Episode five is the one with Quincy Endicott. That one's greed. That one has to be greed. Yes. So let's just say that the first episode is kind of like just getting your bearings. The second one would be Pumpkin Town, which is Limbo, which is kind of like a- afterlife. Okay, but now, now we have to make the school one into lust. So um, there's the love. song yeah. the teacher sings. Yeah, where she's in love. It's the only one with like a proper romance in it, aside from maybe Endicott's. Okay. It's true. So the, the tavern is gluttony. Yeah. And the next one is greed. Yep. Okay. Then What's the it? one after that is uh, the one on the boat Wrath. with the frogs. Wrath. Okay, I guess the frogs get mad at them. Yeah. Frogs do get I, angry. Mm, and then the next get... one is Lorna. Lorna. And that's the one where Beatrice gets found out, right? Uh, no, no, that's the one before that. Okay, yeah. that That's the reason why that one's Wrath is because of uh, Adelaide. Yeah. So then the next is the Greg and uh, Wirt are on their own because they ran away from the Beatrice. And now they're with the uh, uh, anti-whispers. Heresy. Yeah. yeah. Heretics are trapped in flaming tombs. What would you call being trapped in a body that you can't control? Okay. We're stretching here. All right. All right. Yeah, that's a bit one? of a stretch. Next one is when Greg does a lot of weird dreaming. Um, this one is violence. Yeah. 
Um, honestly, I'd probably call that one fraud. I thought that one would be fraud. It's not, though. And then the origin story, which... Treachery! No, that one's fraud. Oh, that one's fraud. I think... Wait, there's ten episodes, right? Yes. yes. Cut out the origin story, because there's only nine circles. Okay, and the last one is the beast is come, the final chapter begins, so... Yeah, that would be resolution. fraud. That'd be fraud. Well, then where's treachery? Um, ninth circle. Oh, no, that's treachery. Okay, so I'm gonna call fraud as the one where he goes to animation world, because that's all... Uh, basically basically employed by the beast to get greg to join him then what one so are we treachery missing? would be i mean i could see treachery being what the beast did to uh the woodsman yeah but i feel like a lot of these are i'm i'm feeling some stretching going on we're, I, we're pulling. Um, this is not my theory i've read it a couple places <laughs> and also just dante and wart look alike and dante is looking for beatrice in the story i feel like there's enough comparisons there where it's like there's a little bit of something to something there yeah mm -hmm. it's okay that's okay mm -hmm. Before... um, according to this uh mm -hmm. cb uh, comic book resources article episode seven is hearsay heresy heresy Heres yeah, i don't know Heretic. how to read i don't know how to read um episode eight is violence okay episode nine is fraud what's the fraud let's think the fraud is apparently the origin story yeah but let's try to i want to think of why is it because He's lying to Sarah. That's what this article says. Okay, what's the next? And then episode 10 is treachery. Okay. And fraud is still the cartoon episode, right? Fraud is the origin story. The cartoon okay. episode is now violence. I guess that's pretty violent. Cartoons in the 40s were pretty violent. And the frog episode is now anger. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, I get anger because Wart leaves his, her in anger, and he literally says he was angry, so he took the scissors with him. So violence is the, the one with the ghost possession going on? Or am I... That's the one where Greg has weird drug child dreams. Yeah. And has to fight That's... the evil wind. Yeah. That appears in his dream and then goes to join the beast, according to this comic book resources yeah. article. Okay, I feel like we're stretching pretty hard on some of these. Okay. I can see other ones, though. I think that there's like a loose connection. Yeah, I don't think it's like a direct one to one, but this has been pitched. Um, there's a weird thing that happens with this show every year for me. Um, anyone that knew me, like any old family friends or like people I went to elementary school with, will just periodically, even before I watch the show, will just text me and be like, have you watched over the garden wall? Greg reminds me of you when you were a child. And I'm like, and this has happened at least four times from different people from different sides. And I'm like, oh, what were you like as a child? Were I was you... a lot like Greg. <laughs> <laughs> so you admit it. <laughs> Good answer. Good answer. Yeah. <laughs> I was so very, you were Greg. I was very optimistic, goofy and a little chubby. Did you have a pet? Did you have a pet? You constantly changed the name of every 10 seconds? No, but I did like giving fun facts. <laughs> and that's oh, a so rock you had fact. A, you had a rock fact without a rock. Are hey, the rock facts false, though? Isn't, wasn't that the point? Every uh, rock fact is false. They're like Except for the last facts. one. Except for the last one where he said that he stole the rock. He's a stealer, and that's a rock fact. But what if he, what if that was actually incorrect? He actually really didn't steal it. Ooh, why would that be your last words, Greg? <gasps> Uh, I don't know. It's a weird, weird thing. <laughs> I, my favorite is just like, <laughs> did you know that dinosaurs had really big ears, but nobody knew because they don't leave bones? That's not true. <laughs> It's, yeah, it's not true. Rock fact. That's a rock fact. Speaking of rock facts, let's compare our opinions to those of the folks over at Letterbox.com. It's time for previews. It's time for previews. It's time for previews. All right, you guys ready? I'm ready. I'm ready. All right, Liz, you're first. Oh, God damn it. Whispers with the two asterisks. I want to clap cheeks with Miss Langtree. Why are people so Oh God! Um, five. That is a five. Good job, Liz. Andrew. Yes. Are you so horny for animated people? <laughs> Who's trying to be the wort to my Sarah? Hmm. Um. I mean, you got to get deep into the show for this, so I'm gonna give it a. I'm gonna give it a five. That's a one. That's a one. You watched the whole fucking show and you gave it a one. I don't know. I was very oh, confused by this weirdo. review. I was very confused <laughs> by this review. Sincerely. Um, all right, Liz, you ready? Right. Over the midden wall. I don't even know what that means. Um, it, it means that one? it's mid. 
And that is incorrect. Oh, okay. Rock fact. And that's rock. a rock fact. <laughs> Andrew, are you ready? I'm ready. I resonate a lot with Adelaide of the pasture. You need to go to therapy. To Adelaide, uh, to Adelaide. So, wants slave labor. Um, We're going to say five stars. Though. That is correct. You are now tied. Liz. Ready. Fantastic. Unfortunately, low amount of horse content, however. There is some, though. There is a... There's a talking horse in this. I get sad when Fred leaves. I always think he's more in the show. and He's probably like one of the best parts. A horse that just wants to steal. Come on. Uh, one. That is correct. Andrew. Yeah. Watched while trapped overnight in Amsterdam. So they were I mean, high. Yeah. So the show is good, but this sounds like a bad experience, but I'm still going to go five stars. That was a one star. Liz. Damn. Jason Thunderbrooker ASMR. That one's for you, Juliet. Okay. I, I love you, Juliet, by the way, but I don't think anyone wants Jason Thunderbrooker ASMR. Hi there, um, Sarah. <sighs> God, God, I'd rather date him than work, though. Anyway. I, w- um, I love the bait and switch with Jason Funderburker, where you may- they try to make you think it's the big chalk, but that's just another guy. He's just and about just- the level of work. <laughs> <laughs> but I wouldn't work- date where he's a whiny, he's a whiny little swing. I date Sarah, though. She seems great, and she loves non-alcoholic beverages, teen-appropriate beverages. She really likes beverages that are completely legal to show people consuming on television. I yeah. love that. That just felt like a studio note that they <laughs> turned into a joke. Uh, I'm going to give that a one because that sounds like a painful experience. That is a five. Andrew. Yes. Oh, God. Okay, hear me out. Over the garden wall, but horror. Hey, hey. Brother, it already is. Um, Five. That is a five. one. Liz. God fucking damn it. Oh, QT. QT? Yeah, the letter Q, the letter T, and a period. I think it was cute. <laughs> uh, I'll give that a one. That is correct. Andrew. Mm-hmm. The loveliest lie of all, which is one of the darkest final lines of a TV show ever. Five? That is a one. But what who, do you who think? Who is hating on this show so much? My God. Yeah, geez. I will say when I went through it, there's a lot of people like overrated, boring, couldn't even get past the second episode. There's a lot of them. Why is it so oh. high rated on Letterboxd? Probably because it's good. Yeah, not, probably. Not, not Letterboxd's fault that you have shit taste. The final line is part of the reason why <laughs> I think that part, I think the ending of the show was a lie, which might le- lend credence to why the woodsman's wife co- or woodsman's daughter comes back, why Beatrice is happy at home, why Greg is alive. Like, I think it's kind of tipping your head that it might not be true maybe uh, i will say i did look this up and i found a reddit thread and people said there's a comic book extension to this show which disproves the purgatory theory entirely that's lame as fuck why yeah, do you have but, to explain um, things stuff isn't canon if i don't want it to be so yeah so according to reddit it's not canon but yeah but reddit. according to reddit uh i was doing their mom last night so <laughs> i saw him do it that's in my canon <laughs> This is why my Reddit username <laughs> is gender neutral as hell. <laughs> um, I forget whose turn it is. Uh, I think Andrew just went, right? I think we already lost, right? I, we got one more. So. Okay, we got one more. I'll go. I'll go. Fuck it. I don't care. Yeah, Andrew can't win this no matter what. Um, oh, God. When in purgatory. Uh, do as the Skellingtons do. Uh, <laughs> five. Someone likes this show, right? That five? is a one. And Liz, you oh have my won God. the box game. I feel like a lot of these people like forgot to put a rating. They were just like, I wrote my review. And then it's just it like automatically sets it to one and then they hit enter. Uh, All right, guys, let's go into a mid show and then we'll talk about some singy songs. Hey guys, sorry to interrupt you in the middle of the show, but we've got a sh 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 at you! Today's show is brought to you by the extremely kind donations by our donors over at Patreon. Patreon is this wonderful place where you get the video episodes of this show, extended versions. Like, literally, there is going to be parts of this show that you will only get to see the full version on Patreon. Also, you will get a bunch of fun stuff that me and Liz got cooked up as well. Me and Andrew are doing commentaries a little bit more frequently, a little less now, but we're going to keep going at them. Um... And also just general updates. On October 21st, join us for a Patreon meetup where Andrew and Liz will both be there. It'll be a really good time, kids. Um, yeah. So, that, what, Liz? Sorry, I don't, I don't know my schedule. Yeah, it'll probably 
be there. Hell yeah. And also, if you're listening to this right now, there is a Kickstarter for my first feature film. And if you've got money or a hole in your pocket, could you please donate to that? Both Liz and Andrew are going to be parts of it. So don't worry. It's a, it's a whole Musicals with Cheese family thing. It's not just me. Um, currently, as I'm recording this, we are like like... I want to say around 30% funded or something like that. Something like that. Um, so help us get there. Um, but those of us currently helping us on Patreon include Liz, give me a beat. No. <laughs> no, no beat this time. We're not doing no it. No beat, Buck. I wasn't here when you did it, but I know. Read I'm it faster. <laughs> just read it. This, wrap it. My God. Yeah, just do a freestyle. You don't need a beat. <laughs> Melissa Goldman and Daniel Reddick no, no, no. went don't to the store with slow. Just don't to wrap it slow. Beat. Don't fast. You and Cassie and Monica Throw went to the store with don't. Monica Marie. Can we Brent take Black the BPM up like 30, 40? <laughs> Here's the beat. Justin Green, Mary Lou Chiquette, John Lindhouse, Russ Walker, Musical Hill, Emily Gracie, Kyle Summers, Shay C, Scoot the Technicolor, Dreamcoat, Liz Lim, Allison Stoller, Nothing is certain to set back statistics. And this being Red Cole, Rafael Martinez, Solo, Jessica T, Mitchell Young, Chai T, Cup, Candy McDonald, Kevin, Timothy Keys, Chris Marcode, Mimu, Kiji, Marie, Anastasio, Layla, Arjuna Regent, Charlie B, Avery Brinson, Mjorn Herman, Terracast, Throyana Fraser, Sammy the Most Lopez, Liana Morton, Angela, Kaylee Blaze, Zier, Blaird, Man, 69, Sid Begetta, Ravie, Sophia, Ali, Billy Omega, Gabe Page, Pearson, Maddie Wargle, Alyssa Erdman, Anna Lostakova, Cheska, Veray, Tara, Dan, Blaker, Jess Gray, Jamila, M. Brown, Evan Ball, Zachary Torres, Spencer, Hellier, and gather parter, Gathering Party Before Venturing Forth. They give us a little financial support that helps us keep the lights on here Musicals of Cheese. If you'd like to join them in supporting us and get tons of per- fun perks, such as Patreon and commentaries, our episodes today early or even earlier, come join us over at Patreon. And in doing that, I just hit all three of my workout goals for the day. Fun fact. Well, <laughs> let's get back to the show. Led through the mist by the milk light of moon, all that was lost is revealed. Our long bygone burdens, mere echoes of the spring. But where have we come, and where shall we end if dreams can't come true? Then why not pretend? So what do you think of that intro number? Uh, I thought the intro was really good, and I was kind of hoping that there would be more. I was uh, a little sad that they, they didn't have like one of those for every episode. I thought that that would be kind of fun. I mean, it's kind of there. Yeah, but I, I wanted the frogs to come in and, and introduce every every little episode, you know? I guess. I mean, I love... I love that Into the Unknown song. I love the vibe and how it sets up literally every character perfectly. Everything that will be important later is set up there. Yeah, it's a... And and that's it's also how they end it. They just mm-hmm. they bring back the little frog, sings a different song at the end. Yeah. Um. W- what vibes did you get from it at first? Like Andrew, I gave this to you without any context. What do you think it would be just from this opening number? I, I feel like I picked up on what it was trying to do pretty quickly. I feel like I had the whole thing not figured out, but like I, I understood what it was going for right from the first episode, right from the get go. You say that um, like it's a bad thing, though. No, it's not. I I am I like when I know what's I'm getting into. You know, I don't I don't like to be uh, surprised. Oh, so you don't like your expectations subverted? You hate the Last Jedi? Are you I all right? I hate all Star Wars movies. Yes. <laughs> I've said this before. I've said this many times. All yeah. Star Wars movies are bad. Um. <laughs> yeah, but some are better. You haven't seen the Last Jedi, so you can't say that one's bad. No, but I can guarantee it's bad. Okay. Because all Star Wars movies are bad, except for like the first one and maybe the I'd, second one. I'd no, say, no, the second one and maybe the first one. <laughs> I'd say the second one, The Last Jedi, are the only ones I really like. I think the only one I actually enjoyed watching was the second, like The Empire. Well, aren't you excited that we're doing the holiday special this Christmas? <laughs> stir, whip, stir, whip, 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 stir. Okay. If we're going to be completely <laughs> honest about things, I've probably watched the holiday special more times than I've watched any actual Star Wars movie. I've watched that movie Star so whip, many star times. Whip, 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 star. Star whip. 
The only yeah. clip I've seen is Carrie Fisher really high trying to sing, and that weird thing the grandpa looks at in the VR that's basically kid porn. Uh, kid porn? Yes. No, it's not kid yeah. porn, it's normal porn. It's normal porn, not kitty porn. <laughs> <laughs> that would be fucking weird. Yes. That would be okay, weird. normal porn is totally fine. <laughs> I, I just, it's Diane Carroll. She's an of age woman with a bunch of Dr. Seuss splooge yes, all over her head. And showing normal porn to children in your Star Wars thing <laughs> is normal and fine to do. In 1970 um, something. <laughs> 1978, November 1978, it aired one time and Diane Carroll, Jefferson Airplane, but Jefferson Starship in that point. Um, Harvey Corman, so many good people in that. Written by Bruce Willis. It really Valanche. turned out good. It did. I did love you just say Harvey special. Corman is one of the good things in that? Yeah. Have you seen it? No. I've seen B the Arthur. I've also seen the B. Arthur scene. He's in that stir, scene. Stir, whip, stir, whip, 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 stir. And that. <laughs> yes. I, I think that's like the only thing I actually remember from it. That and, and it's like Life Day or Life yes, Day. Yes, it's Life Day. Life Day. Life Day. Okay. Um, Someone did threaten to request that on Patreon, but I still, I, I, it kind of made me sold on doing it this Christmas now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I will, I will now everyone knows here. that we're gonna do it too so now they're gonna hold us to it we can't cancel we it we celebrate a day of peace <laughs> a day of happiness I love my partner the will periodically text me that one gif of lumpy that's available on the <laughs> keyboard just for fun like I'll just open my phone and be like oh my, my partner texts me and it's just lumpy <laughs> I think the only things I know about that is from the Red Letter Media thing, which I have watched both of their episodes. The one where they Ishtar don't talk about it, it at they all. Bait, they bait you the entire time that they're going to talk about it and they don't. That's and then also the one where they actually talk about it. I've watched both of those like multiple times. Me too. But I think I've watched the holiday special more times than either of them. Oh my God. You've actually seen the real thing. Before. I've seen I've seen the real thing multiple times. There's a bar I go to in Detroit. Um. And every Christmas, they just play it at the bar, and they have a drinking game, and it's so much fun. Everybody must get fucking toasted. Everyone oh. must be nearly dead at the end of the night. It's so much fun, though. Come on. I mean, it does seem like a funny bad movie, though. It doesn't seem like yeah. a boring movie. It has, like, actually good parts. Like, I really like the animated segment. I think that's properly good. Isn't that what everybody says is, like, the animated segment is the one yeah. good thing in the whole thing? I mean, that's not the one good And it's also where thing. Boba Fett came from. Like, that's Which is what every appearance. nitpicky nerd will tell you where Boba Fett comes from online. So, fun fact. Did you know that Boba Fett came from the holiday special, actually? Um, can you tell yeah, me? He made you in that movie. He debuted in the holiday special. <laughs> well, the, um, so fun fact. Um, do you know who Cree Summer is? No. Yes. Okay. She's a voice I think, actress, I believe. Yes. That is her father playing Boba Fett in that special. Amazing. The original Boba Fett. Yeah, the original Boba There's Fett Boba. is the father of Cree Summer, who is like, I think she's like the voice of, oh, what's her name? Susie Carmichael and the girl from The Kids Next Door and all that. She's that kind of voice actress so i just think that's a fun fact because i know too much about the star wars holiday special and when we cover Speaking it then of cartoon network shows yeah, here we go back to <laughs> over the garden wall let's move on to the next song which i think is patient is the night which is the song that plays over them doing chores among the fields of straw and stone This the vibe of this song is just so relaxing. Well, yeah, it's it's the uh, you're supposed to be like, oh, oh, geez, nothing, nothing's actually gonna happen, and then you see them digging their own graves, and you're like, oh, wait. <laughs> I agree, but like a lot of people get these pastiche kind of songs so fucking wrong, like especially in musical theater. If there's one thing the musical theater is doing very badly lately, it's pastiche of like a bygone time because they just sound like pretend. Example. Give me an example. Um, oof. like Tootsie. Like all those are trying to be pastiches of like '90s music, or even like Six to a certain extent, um, where they're trying to I don't do think like I've heard much from girl Six pop yet. music from the '90s, and it just kind of it feels like imitation. Even Hamilton feels like imitation of rap music rather than a pastiche, and it feels too theatery, too pretty. Where this just feels rough. Um, 
And I just found it doesn't have to do with anything. It's just pretty. Like the lyrics have no real meaning. Well, this is all done by some folk band, right? Yes. That's what you said at the beginning here. I'm about to look them up. I like this kind of like uh, neo folk music. Um, and I don't think I've heard like an American style of it. So. No. Um, I do. I really liked a lot of the like ambient music that just plays mm -hmm. throughout this as well. I do want to give you the claimed meaning of the song which is actually much darker than i thought which is th that the narrator is awaiting death this is evidenced by the fact that despite proclaimed to be clocked into the work days over he says that he is anxiously waiting instead of working in that this case the night would mean death alongside the woman who is described this could be signifying work as he expresses an inclination to remain in potsfield and after his ultimate decision to keep traveling essentially confronting and overcoming death he ceases to recite his morose poetry, only picking it back up after he is betrayed by Beatrice. Hmm. I guess staying in Pottsfield is literally saying you are dead, so. Yeah, and Chris Isaac sings this song. He is the voice in it. I, I really like the that there's like a meaning to the lyric that actually ties in. I feel like that's something that you only would see in a show where they actually give a shit, <laughs> you know? I feel like the show is so short and it's so easy to give a shit. <laughs> yeah, but that's, I feel like that's a good thing. I think more TV shows should should be like a one season full story like complete thing where they have an ending in mind i hate tv shows where they just keep going and they just don't end and it's just like stranger things we're looking at you yeah and it's just like you know and i have a show like, like i really like the boys right now but i kind of am getting the vibe where it's like it just keeps going and nothing major happens and i'm just like do they have an ending or is this going to go until Amazon decides we're done and then they'll just shoehorn like slap an ending on there at the end of it? One of the things I'm really appreciating about what like Liz, I know you're a big fan of Ted Lasso, same as me, is that they're like, we only had three seasons planned. I think we're done after three seasons. <laughs> and I'm like, I respect yeah. that. Give me a satisfying ending. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I remember like, uh, Rachel Bloom was like, yeah. yeah, we're done after four. Um, That's it. And I respected that like deeply for Crazy Girlfriend. I, I don't know if there even is people out there that just want shows to go forever unless it's like a sitcom where it's it doesn't matter. Like, it's just haha, funny. Same thing happens over and over. I mean, if they like, end on a cliffhanger, <laughs> then I'm like, yeah, wrap that up please that's a little different i'd yeah. say like gray's anatomy fans probably wanted to keep going that show's been going on for like 300 decades what feels maybe like, simpsons so. fans no no there are no there are no, there are no simpsons fans that exist that don't want it to end so people are saying it's getting good again i don't believe that people are watching it for the first time in like are in they're blind they don't know what it used to be like i think we got a bunch of like zoomers who are like i just saw the simpsons on tv and like it's actually pretty good but they've never seen the older episodes like they don't know how good it used to be i mean the thing is everyone's ripped off the simpsons it's hard to even give it a proper context anymore it's true like yeah. how do you watch the simpsons after family guy has been on for almost as long as they have family guy <laughs> american dad um even south park south mcfarlane uh, Seth MacFarlane. <laughs> Even South Park to some degree. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, um, yeah, so let's move the on. The next one has two songs that I think. Do you want to talk about Miss Langtree's Lament? Yeah, this one's pretty funny. A is for the apple that he gave to me, but I found a worm inside. B is for the lover that I called to him before he left my side. And C. See what he did, that's D. Did it to poor old me. How could I be such an emotional fool if... She's doing the ABCs, right? But yes. she's also doing like a, like a, I'm heartbroken because gorilla suit, you know? Yeah, because my husband abandoned me my husband abandoned me and there's also a gorilla well she doesn't know that yet and it's jimmy brown um she doesn't know that the husband is the gorilla but she does sing about the gorilla in the lament you're right i i think it's funny lyrics like and they don't focus enough on the lyrics so you kind of have to listen to the soundtrack to really get how good the they cut away are. from the song a couple times yeah. and they come back like at random points like um, g is for the gentleman i thought he was when he first said hi h i j is for the joke that jimmy b the man who made me cry that's c <laughs> like i think that's really funny like a teacher that can't deal with her emotional trauma and just trauma dumping on kids we've all had that teacher before oh man yeah. it's and real. then we also got in the same episode we have potatoes and molasses which is another good one. Oh, this song oh, is so cute it makes my heart so happy <laughs> would you put molasses on potatoes no I, I, it, it would taste so terrible it would i don't know 
I guess syrup is good on a lot of stuff that even you wouldn't think. Yeah. Like I put I put maple syrup on my Pasta. sausages. No. No, I don't. Uh. No, not we're not doing elf. Um, <laughs> this is an elf. But I actually put them on sausages for like breakfast, That's and then gross, I'll have a hash bro. brown, and I'll put the hash brown oh, in the maple make syrup, me throw which the fuck that up. is that is potatoes in syrup. That kind of sounds good, molasses. actually. It is yeah. good. Don't even. That fucking... sounds delicious. I would. I might want to try that next time I'm at a diner. Just make up some sausages and make up a hash brown, and then you put the syrup on the sausage, and then you dip the the, the hash brown into the into the syrup. Well, potatoes we'll call that the all... Andrew breakfast. <laughs> yes, can... it's it's potatoes and syrup. But syrup isn't molasses. They're not actually no. the same thing. So. No, no, no. They are very different. You could argue that the potatoes are deeply under seasoned. It might help a little, but other than that. At I, first, I didn't think they were eating potatoes. I thought it was supposed to be like a nebulous, yes. like overly bland food. It was just like a white I paste. thought it was like a demonic presence <laughs> that was going to take over their bodies or something and like cause issues, but it was just potatoes. Um, I like that Greg is so vehemently against school until there's like a Sasquatch coming to get him. And then he's like, I'm going to go in and eat and deal with school for a bit. And he's like, Miss Langtree, play something like this. And he plays gibberish on the piano. Things like that really endear me to Greg. Yeah. All right. What's the next like good song? I want to talk about the I Highwayman, like, this... like specifically. This one's so short, but okay. I'm the Highwayman. I make ends meet. Just like any man. I work with my hands. You cross my path. I'll knock you out. Let you out the road. Steal your shoes from off your feet. I'm the highwayman. When I make it. In our years of doing this show, we have covered so many Cab Calloway ripoffs or wannabe Cab Calloways, whether it be Oogie Boogie or the one song of. of fine affair from the tom and jerry movie yes yes and which that of, one was directly cab calloway and all of them Oof. failed except for this one they got the animation right they got the style of singing perfect it's like they put the it's like they animated them normally and then put it through like a fisheye lens when they they probably didn't film it but like if, yeah. if you were in the old animation days that's how i feel i mean like have you seen the mini the moocher animation andrew i have not Okay, we're going to show you that real quick. Um, oof. Honestly, one day I'm thinking we might just cover Minnie the Moocher because this is like one of my favorite animated things ever. Okay. Um, all right, so you're going to get to it. So this is how the how they move in that. Oh, it's a Betty Boop thing? Yeah. So that's Cab Galloway performing as this weird seal creature. And that's exactly how the Highwayman moves. Yeah, you're right. It's got a kind of like a weird... Rotoscope vibe. Weird vibe to it, yeah. And they get that right for the Highwayman. Um, and then, of course, yeah. the singing... I mean, the Highwayman song isn't quite as screamy as Cab Calloway's Minnie the Moocher. But it is just as it, it gets the vibe. Now, a highwayman, that's just someone who steals from people on the road, right? Yes. Um, and in the comics, they... it's a he's a it's a land pirate. Yes. I want to be a highwayman. Um, so, you know, why Fred likes to steal is because the highwayman found Fred and made him his stealing horse. <laughs> that was, we found that out in a, in a comic. So <laughs> it's all. Wait, so that's not, we've already established that the comics not. Canon I know. I, I just thought be. you'd like to know that we, we have some context for why th that might it be it i also want to bring up so you know when greg's dying um this yeah. is calling back they have a latin version of potatoes and molasses playing in the background there like a really sad version of it saying it sung entirely in latin <laughs> and i think that's very funny of course all right i don't i think the main ones i want to talk about now are just the the fucking b songs um yes let's go to that what's the what's the lot what do you want to talk about the just the beast is out there or what um what are the two he sings like two songs, but I feel like they're pretty similar. It's Come Wayward Souls, mm -hmm. and I don't even know if the other one has a name, but it's just like he's singing about cutting down trees. Yes, um, getting them all out. Um, so Come Wayward Souls is like the a very unpleasant sounding song in a weird way. Come wayward souls and wander through the darkness. There is a light for the lost and the weak. Sorrow and fear are easily forgotten. 
Yeah. He's like he's doing like some like opera style yeah. vibrato, but it's like it's it's like it's almost like he's going out of key while he's doing it. Which makes it sound like really weird. Um, he sounds scary. <laughs> um, yes, and it's like strangely to the tune of "Oh Holy Night." Like I can't not hear "Oh Holy Night" when he's singing it. Yeah, and then they have like the little kids that come in. Yes, it's in this one properly and, yeah. spooky. And also, if you just listen to the lyrics, it's like really dark. It's like "Come wayward souls that wander through the darkness." There is a light for the lost and the meek. Sorrow and fear are easily forgotten when you submit to the soil of the earth. Yeah, and then the I believe that the kids sing about like becoming a tree. Yes. <laughs> Um, yeah, I guess when, when the, when the beast had the lantern, which is implied that he used to, mm -hmm. that'd probably be pretty scary. That would have been a good, that would have been a good image. Yeah, so like, like a, a kid gets lost in the woods and sees like a light and wanders towards it. And it's just him. Ooh, ooh. There's so much that's just so spooky about this, just in the thought of it, rather than just the actual execution in the story. I think the only thing I don't like about the execution is it seems uh, trivially easy to not become a tree. The thing is, I think it sneaks up on you. Like, Wirt is almost turned into a tree when he's just sleeping. And the only reason why he doesn't become a tree is because Greg says, I'll become a tree. Yeah, but then the beast i think the one i'm mainly thinking of is the the beast gets greg to become a tree and then is like i'll put his soul in the thing if you and he's just like oh no i'm just gonna take him out and then he just removes him from the tree and yeah. walks out and it's like wait what <laughs> i think the beast just had the wood woodsman to deal with which is the reason why he let him go so early so easily it's because the woodsman now suddenly realizes the ploy yeah yeah, yeah. I mean, there is a little bit of a continuity error because the light does go out in the first episode for a second. The does lantern it really? does, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, I'm not going to be fucking cinema sins over here, but it did happen. Doesn't it also yeah, fall the on the ground yeah. in, in one of the episodes and like light a tree on fire? Yep. Does it not um, go out then? Maybe it doesn't. I don't know. I just remember going out and I'm like, oh, that's supposed to be the soul of the wood or the, the, the beast. Maybe he had a different lantern at that time. Maybe. Um, speaking of that, I do want to talk very briefly before we wrap this up. What'd you think of the cartoon anime animated pastiche episode? Cause I don't like that episode. I did not like that one at all. Oh, like the one where he goes into the dream. Yeah. I don't like it. I'm not a fan. I think it's episode eight. Yeah. I don't like the dream stuff. I feel like it's like, it's too silly. It doesn't fit the tone of the rest of the show very well. And I don't even um, think that's how Greg sees the world, which is what I think they're trying to imply. I think Greg is just optimistic, not, you know, deluded. Eh, he might be a little deluded. Not in that way. Not in the way that they're but, showing there, where he thinks a blue fairy is going to save the day. I mean, the blue fairy does save the day, maybe. But is it the beast? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you can say anything for Greg, though. It's that he's completely fucking fearless. I mean, he just sees the beast and walks towards him. <laughs> Greg is fearless in a way that kids are, where they just see the best in every situation. Whether it's a beast or a child molester, it's like, hey, friend, break oh, out They that. say they have candy. They must. <laughs> Windowless fans. I have candy I in my pants to stay too. Away from those. Um, all right. What is our overall thoughts on Over the Garden Wall and our cheese rating? Andrew, why don't you start? Sure. Um, I thought it was really good, pretty much all the way through. And uh, as I said earlier, it's it's a vibe, it's a vibe based thing, you know. Uh, <laughs> but no, but like I actually I actually recommend it if you haven't seen it. But probably everyone listening to this has seen it. I feel like this is one of those things where I was like one of the last people who hasn't seen this, and like everyone else on the internet has seen it and loves it. You're you completely know? correct, Andrew. We're on a very late time stream. In fact, two years ago, I was thinking about doing it and asked, "Hey, does this count as a musical?" And they're like. No, but if it means you cover it on the show, do it. Yeah. So you you've seen it, you know it's good, and uh, hope we it's added good. some context to it. Yeah. Um. Uh, as far as a a cheese rating, um, I'm trying to think of like a a good a good rating that this would work with this, and I'm almost not even sure what I would give it. But maybe I'll give it cheese with molasses. That's a good choice. Um. All right, Liz. How about you? Uh, I enjoyed this. I remember, as I was watching, because I remember when I had mono last year, you told me to watch this. I did, and you to didn't. To make me feel better, and then I didn't. Do you wish you had? So, I kind of wish I had now. Do you understand why I recommended it now? Yeah, it's a honestly, perfect... this on sick brain would probably be a trip. It's a perfect kind of, like, 
um you know sickly day kind of vibe yeah no honestly if i was on sick brain i'd probably love this like deeply if you're taking an lsd trip man maybe this is the one to turn on you got mono watch over the garden wall um, your brain will love it i told you i think we brought up when we had kate sloan on when she took lsd she turned on the producer's movie so hey whatever your comfort movie is turn that on while you're on lsd indeed uh but i really enjoy this it's very cute um it's only like two hours so it's a lot of fun you could just do it in a night on a spooky evening i'm like andrew i'm assuming everyone who's listening to this has already watched it so written their oc insert character porn or whatever the yeah, fuck already. they probably made a fan theory on youtube i haven't found in my search yet when i yeah the it's, fan it's theory. definitely one of those shows where you, you yeah. know the fan base is um greg is really worth dad <laughs> god this, this is the type of show where I, I will love it, but I won't tell anyone in public that I love it because then I have to get I, I have to walk on eggshells like, are you part of the fan base, though? You know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. What other things are like that? I'm curious. Rick and Morty. Yes. Yeah, Rick and Morty's a good one. There's there's a lot of stuff like that. I feel yeah, like is. Star Wars is Oh man, mm. if you like Star Wars and you tell someone you like Star Wars and they really <laughs> like Star Wars, I agree you're in for one. like a three hour conversation. I made that, that mistake once at a party of. with a drunk guy. <laughs> Yeah, no. But there's don't also do just it. like do it. basic filmmaking. Like, if you say you like any Tarantino film to the wrong guy, like they will talk your ear off the well, rest of the night. Yeah. yeah, it's it's these niche things where people get way too passionate about it. They're and it's half just ass like, niche things, not even real niche things. Yeah, yeah. That's the thing is it's it's like mainstream stuff that people think are that niche. like normal people think are niche. It's like yeah. Quentin Tarantino movies are like world renowned. Everyone has seen them. You're not like what. <laughs> it's like wow have you seen this ki kill bill thing i've heard so much about like, oh my god a yeah. lot of people have oh my god i saw the weirdest movie i swear to god it's so mental it's called a million ways to die in the west which funnily enough Doc, uh christopher lloyd made in the same year as over the garden wall i checked what a what a wild christopher night. lloyd's in oh right there's the back to the he future plays scene Doc brown yeah he seth mcfarlane is so unfunny that he literally is just like what if I just do Back to the Future Part 3 in yeah. my movie? Fun thing about going on IMDb <laughs> on Christopher Lloyd's page is if you scroll, most of it is just Doc Brown. It's like, <laughs> Doc Brown, Doc Brown, Doc Brown, Doc Brown. Maybe the, that character from the Oogie Loves, Doc Brown. So, fun fact, I, um, people have almost Patreon requested Oogie Loves many times. Um... And has come this Just close to being on you this fucking podcast. cowards. Yeah. And I, I haven't tried talking Stop them out them. of it, but. Stop them. Just fucking do it, you cowards. Yeah. You if... want to hear me talk about Oogie Loves, and you know you do. In the big balloon adventure. The big balloon adventure? I will have so much to say. You know this. The funniest part about the fucking Oogie Loves <laughs> is they brought it out as if it was something that's existed for years. Like, oh, finally, the Oogie Loves movie. The Oogie Loves movie. We <laughs> Been waiting. <laughs> Do you know the story of why the Oogie Loves movie exists, Andrew? Uh, they couldn't get the rights to the fucking some other shit. No, <laughs> fucking the no. director went to a Tyler Perry movie and saw that the audience was participating and said, I want to do that, but for kids. That's every kid's thing ever. Just do the Door of the Explorer movie. I, you know, yeah. the Blue's Clues movie. Or do that movie. Barney movie, The Magical Egg, I watched 10 times as a child. Well, I, I actually saw that one in theaters. Um, Fun fact. Um, I was like Thomas and the, the Magic Railroad. I thought that that was a great. Yeah. Even though I was a big fan of Elmo and Grouchland. Mandy Patinkin. Only available on VH. HS. Mandy Patinkin. So, Elmo and Grouch. Mandy Patinkin. I did one. not know who he was at the age of like four, so. I watched the have of everything. I'm gonna steal it. Hi, Mandy Patinkin. I didn't know he was in it till I was an adult. And I was like, oh, man, I, Manny Patinkin was a big figure in my childhood. Speaking of, cool. wow, okay, so there's a lot of Sondheim alums in these movies, because in the Barney movie, you know who the grandfather is, right? That's George Hearn, no. the, one of the original Sweeney Todd's in the recording. I didn't know who George Hearn was until you just told me. So Yeah, and there has to be someone in Thomas and the Magic Railroad, Alec Baldwin, known renowned murderer. That's true. That's true. Well, manslaughterer. Allegedly. Uh... Allegedly. No. No one sue us. I'm not alleged. I like see Alec what Baldwin try, to be honest. <laughs> Alec Baldwin, come at me, bro. <laughs> but not with a gun. I wanna yeah, not with Allegedly. A gun, <laughs> I'm trying to protect us legally. <laughs> <laughs> Look, no, if, if if he wants to sue us, he's gonna have to prove that he didn't shoot somebody. <laughs> <laughs> He doesn't even 
he's a nine that he shot somebody. Uh, it's, he didn't murder so it's him not he allegedly. He that's manslaughter. Sincere, Maybe he didn't get legally in trouble for it. But. No, since uh, uh, if I'm gonna break this down, he shouldn't be the one getting it legal. Okay, let me break break this down even more. If he weren't okay. also the producer of that movie, he should not be getting in legal trouble. But since, like, if he was just an actor given a hot gun and being told it was a cold gun, that's one thing. But he's also the producer that hired people and all that. Therefore, he is still liable, but not because he was the one that fired the gun. Yes, but yes. because he was the one who fired the gun, but also the one who gave himself the gun that fired the gun. Yeah. The Logistically. Gun. I mean, this is... Not quite a John Landis situation with the Twilight Zone incident. Do you know about that, Andrew? Uh, the the one where they killed a uh like a bunch of people with a helicopter. That one. Three people, two children, one old man. Yes. Oh. Yes. Yeah, where the yeah, this is like one of the worst things to ever happen in filmmaking history, if I recall. Yes. Yeah. And the only thing to come close to it ever since is one event in Michigan where a gentleman did not get the rights to film on a train track. Um, and it's like one of those bridge train tracks. Um, a gentleman, Jess. It was not me. I can say this. It was not, Jess. It was not me. Jess. It was not me. Allegedly. By the way, fun Jess's movie. I'm kidding. It no, no, no. I swear to God, this wasn't me because I would get permits. He didn't get permits, but it's like one of those train tracks on a bridge where there's no sides to it and just a fall to the death. Um, and they didn't get approval to get there, so they didn't reroute the trains. So a train starts coming. They start running. PA was ran over lost thousands of dollars um that was bad and the director i think this might be the first in its case is legally prohibited from ever making another film <laughs> oh lord that is the reason why he's i know this allowed. By oh, of is law, he is not allowed to make another movie that's pretty oh, funny it, that's it's not because yeah. someone died in a very horrendous way no, it's tragic because of the Obviously. incompetence of their director of not yeah, putting yeah, safety it's, first it's funny that that's the legal penalty they gave him is, i mean he also oh, went to prison like you can't so make good. another movie like he went to prison for a couple of years but when he came out they're like you're never allowed to make a movie again <laughs> he's like you're on yeah, a film set someone will be informed and kick you out. literally i think he was kicked out of the dga i mean obviously kicked out of the dga yeah um on that note my cheese rate well I, I didn't give a cheese. I'm so sorry, Liz. <laughs> go ahead. What's your cheese rating? It's fine. It's fine. We usually go off topic during my cheese ratings. It's fine. I mean, I you were so interesting. Pumpkin cheese balls. Oh, do you have pictures of what those look like? I do. I can share them. I googled spooky cheeses spooky and cheeses. Uh, this popped up. Excuse all my horrible tabs. Well, let's read all your tabs real quick. Oh my god, those are cute. Yeah. All right, that's a good choice. Um, so you like the show? Yeah, I like the show. And Jess, how about you? Um, I like the show. It's good. Um, hard to complain about something that's so good. I am giving this Emporium Selection Scary Pumpkin Spice Wensleydale Cheese as sold on Instacart. It is Wensleydale Cheese mixed with cinnamon, ginger, and nutmeg. It sounds disgusting, but it has a like it has a little like um has a little pumpkin thing that it comes in. I thought it was cute. Look at that. Aww. Oh, it's cute. I like that. Yeah. Like I I could not do that, right? It's from Aldi, which is a little bit questionable, but What's question about about good deals, Liz? I once drank Aldi fruit punch and I thought I was going to die. Maybe it's just your body's not prepared for the good deals that you get from Aldi. Or I could just go to Wegmans instead, which is what I did. You know who definitely should go to Wegmans, though? Me. Our wonderful patrons. Thank you guys for listening. Please follow us on iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, Musical for Cheese. Leave us a review. We need more reviews. It's the holiday season coming up, and that would be a great Christmas present. Follow us on Twitter, at Cheesy Musicals. We're on Patreon, Musicals for Cheese, Instagram, Musicals for Cheese, YouTube page, Musicals for Cheese. We have a Patreon-only podcast called Patreon with Cheese. Email us at musicaltheaterlives at gmail.com. Our keeper of the cheese is Juliet Antonio. You're the fucking best, Juliet! And here's a motherfucker for your dad. Um... This show is produced by the wonderful, the incredible Brianna Jones, who sadly is not here because today is Yom Kippur and Elizabeth Eston stepped in so gracefully today. You did a wonderful job. Happy Liz. to be here. Um, our theme songs were created by Robin Nash of IOU Music UK. Thank you to the Broadway Podcast Network for having us on the platform. All right, folks. Is there anything else we have left to say? Potatoes with molasses. Um, if you mm. don't understand, you should wear your glasses. Potatoes with molasses. All right. I love Greg. I love Greg too. Um, we'll see you next time on Musical with Cheese. <laughs> I'm the highway man.
trying to make men's beat. It's like any man. I work with my hands. If you cross my path, I'll knock you out. Drag you off the roads and steal the shoes off your feet. I'm the highway man and I make ends meet.